discuss all things dogs. My name is Pam, and today I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Susanna. Hi. This Hi. show is brought to you by Toronto Dog Walking and I Speak Dog. So we have a really fun and informative show planned for you guys today. So what we're going to go through, you know what you're feeding your dog, what's in your dog's food. We're going to give you the breakdown and how marketing can make you purchase food that's not necessarily the best thing for your dog. We're going to go through dogs in the news this week, how to choose a good dog walker, the study of the week, how cats and dogs are consuming and processing carbon sensitivity. Susanna then will take your dog training questions. So if you have a dog training question, if you're watching us on Instagram, go ahead and post it now. We will get to it at the end of the show. And if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and pop it in the comment section and we will get to those at the end. So even if you don't stay with us for the whole time, you can come back in and we will tag you so then you know that we have answered the question and you can come back in and watch it from those minutes. So we would love you to share the show. If you're watching us now on Facebook, if you could share, we would love to be able to just spread the word, make lots of dogs nice and happy and just provide an education and doing best practices by your dog. So again, as I said, any time throughout the show, Put, put comments in. We love to hear what you guys are thinking about the topics that we are talking about. And if you have any dog training questions, go ahead and pop them in. If you're watching the replay, same rules apply. We will come back in and we will check the questions and we will get back to you guys. So, Susanna, I'm, I'm going to probably get a bit confused talking about the topic that I'm about to talk about, which is dog food and how the marketers are selling dog food to people who think they're doing a great job for the dog by feeding them. What would you call it? Real food? Like, the real food is <clears throat> like, <laughs> I'm going to get really annoyed here, so <laughs> apologies in advance. So, dog food and the power marketing. Do you know what's in your dog's food? So I want you to type in the comment section right now, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, and let us know what you're feeding your dog and what you think is in the food. So what, what, what are you feeding your dog? And what do you think is in the food? So recently, I, the reason I'm talking about this today is recently I was targeted on Instagram by a dog food company. And I think, yeah, now you can just bring up and have a look at the image that I was targeted by. So looking at this image, and guys, if you're not on Instagram, I will just describe I will describe it now for you in a second, but guys who are watching on Facebook, if you're looking at this image right now of the dog food, what do you think is in the dog food? Like Susanna, from looking at this image here, what do you think is in the dog food? I'm going to tell you that dog does a lot of uh, byproducts and fillers mm -hmm. and whatnot. So By looking at the picture, not what you know, from looking no. at the picture. <laughs> average, um, you're not Susanna, you're looking at this image, what are you going to say is in the dog food? It's chicken. I see chicken. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? I see that it's grain free. There's a lot. There's some vegetables there too. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. That's all I see. And the dog that looks appears very happy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So we're told it's grain free. So the grain free has kind of become the new in thing when marketing to people. So guys, the message on the food for those watching on Instagram is that the dog food is grain free because we were all like the latest education that people are getting to know is that a lot of the dry food is made up of grains like corn and all that kind of stuff. So the marketing department here are telling us that the food is grain free and then that's going to just send off the good, the good things to, to people when thinking they're like, okay, right. I'm, I'm actually feeding my, feeding my dog something good. So let's look at the image. So guys who aren't watching on Instagram, it's a, it's a white bag of dog food. There's a really happy dog in the middle. It's telling us that it's all simple, real ingredients. There's like a picture of pumpkin, leafy greens, blueberries, and chicken. Mm -hmm. So like it's giving you all the all the messaging that this is like a really, really awesome, awesome food. Like I'm feeding my dog natural food. And then there's a happy little doodle puppy with this bowl of food. So the packaging is happiness, grain free, and real food. But is it real food? Let's have a look at the ingredients. 
And then you can just pop up the ingredients and for those who are watching, you can be able to read the ingredients on your screen. For those of you on Instagram, I'm gonna talk through them anyway. So it says, okay, the first ingredient is chicken. But what, what is chicken? So the chicken can actually contain bones, offal and undeveloped eggs, but only contains feathers that are unavoidable in the process of the poultry part. So it's not like we're getting chicken breasts, we're not getting real chicken. It's literally, they can call chicken the bones. So it could be a carcass of a chicken, it can be anything that's ground up. So the way they say chicken doesn't mean chicken. It's the same way if you see salmon as the first ingredient on dog food, unless it's called wild salmon, but then it's not necessarily what you're looking for. So the next thing on the ingredients is pea starch. And what is pea starch? It's a cheap, cheap way to make up for the lack of meat. So it's a protein that's shoved into the food to boost it because there is no protein in the food. So it's like um, a substitute for the protein that's not there in the food that you think is there. The next big one is the root flour, also known as tapioca. So tapioca is often chemically modified before formulation in the food products and as such, presents a threat to the health by binding essential minerals that play key roles in many critical enzyme systems and also producing the disease. And I'm not gonna say this right, but periketosis. So like, like, but even the words themselves here, like, okay, we're into the first three ingredients and where is the food? Where the hell is the food? Like, so my rule that I have is if I can't pronounce these ingredients and I don't know what they are, I don't buy that kind of food for my dogs, especially yep. when my dog's allergic to everything. I It has to be very simple, very plain. It needs to be something that, you know. Oh, for yeah. sure. Like, well, like, that's what I'm like. We're already into the third ingredient and we still haven't found any real food. Yeah. The next part is chicken byproduct meal. And the word meal should, should set alarm bells off for everybody. So this is made from the grinding, clean, rendered parts of poultry carcasses and contains bones, offal, more undeveloped eggs, and then again, only feathers that are unavoidable in the process. So again, they might as well be the same ingredient as the first time, but this is just grinded up chicken bits that were left over from, we don't even know, like it's not even going to be from the factories that might be like, like, I know. It's not even from the guys who are actually buying and selling chickens. So the next one is another soya germ, soybean germ meal and soybean meal, more meal. So the leading causes of short term food allergies and longer term intolerance and sensitivities in pets, unless soy is labeled as organic, it's undoubtedly genetically engineered and laden with highly toxic herbicides and insecticides. Like, like are they for real? The fifth ingredient and were like, like this is just it's absolutely shocking what they're putting in dog food and then we're on to the next one which is actually okay it's um beef fat naturally preserved with mixed taco ferrol maybe i'm not pronouncing it right but this one is actually okay it's considered safe natural preservatives are typically made from vitamin c or e you'll usually find them in the dog food ingredients list using some of the words Pocophil and it's sorbate. And guys, I apologize already for the, for the mispronunciation. So that's what we're into the sixth ingredient. And there's wow. something that has just been proven to be okay, like, like just okay. Like, can you imagine if you actually put that on a plate, Susanna, what it would actually look like? I don't want to imagine. I don't want it on my plate. And again, as I have a dog that is uh, allergic to a lot of things, I could never even imagine giving my dogs um, those ingredients. Yeah, like, right. So imagine your plate here. We have pretend soy. Mm -hmm. We have carcasses of chicken. Oh, gosh. You have Ugh. a couple of feathers maybe on the side, like, and just ground up other bits out of the chicken that doesn't fit in with wherever or like was the initial part. Like it's really, really disgusting that the fooling of people, because if you if you say you're feed like you're feeding your dog real food, and then if I I'd love to actually go out and buy the stuff, put it on a plate and go, would you feed this to your dog? Because most people are going to say no. Like, and then even to go on, like a few other, like just a quick summary of some of the other ingredients is dried people, 
which is actually an artificial fiber just to harden your dog's poo. Because if your dog's poo isn't hard, you're going to think there's something wrong with the food that they're eating. So it's basically fooling you into thinking the dog food is okay because you're not seeing the waste coming out the way it should be from eating that crap. Like, well, then that's lost. I can't even imagine. I cannot. I honestly, I can't even imagine. Like, but these, the, 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 but this is the thing. Like, it's such a huge corporation, right? Like, food industry is so big. Even like our industry too. Like, the food industry for humans too. Mm -hmm. And the things they're gonna put in the food, and just like you know, one thing will set off another, and then another thing's gonna balance something else, and then mm -hmm. it's just to mask and hide a lot of things, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, mask and stuff is just like that's. You wouldn't do it to, to a person, like, like but that's the not. part. And then yeah. the next part is what they're putting in is poultry and pork digest, which the legal definition of animal di digest allows it to be sourced from dead, non-slaughtered, diseased, or even euthanized animals. Like, so, the, like, it sounds like poultry and pork digest. Like, if I say that to you, what, what would you just think that was? Like, you're just hearing chicken and pork. You're not really hearing... It might be a dead animal on the side of the road. It might you know be a, a, a pet, that, like a pet chicken that or whatever that got put to sleep. So because they were diseased or they had illnesses, oh, sure, let's feed them to the dogs. Yeah. So there is. Um, I can't remember what this documentary is, and it's like about human food, right? Mm -hmm. I. If, if that's what they do with human food, I can only imagine what these corporations are going to be doing it for dog food, right? Too, and mm -hmm. and. I just, I can't even digest this information that you just shared with us. So, um, wow. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, if you can just put the, the picture back up on the screen of the, of the, the real dog food, the real food that you're actually eat, like you think your dog is eating, like this doesn't even cover real, like it doesn't even cover because like, it's really, really sad to think. And then when you even go through the ingredients, even the vitamins aren't vitamins. There's some kind of crappy source that may have some of the vitamin. Like, it's not like if we went and we were getting our vitamins ourselves. Like, it's really, really bad how all the different sources, like, they're using even coloring. Like, anytime you see the coloring in your dog food, because they might be spraying the kibble, like, a green to make you think it's E or, like, yellow oh, for, like, like, oh, that's this kind of stuff. So you look at this packaging and you're saying to yourself, again, guys, are those watching on Instagram, it's a picture of a happy little doodle with his dog food. It said all sorts but real ingredients. There's a picture of pumpkins, blueberries, green leaves, and chicken. Um, we just went out, like, we just went through the ingredients and I can't even tell you what it would look like if we put it on a plate. Like, disturbing. That's what um, Jeff is asking here, if there's kibble that is actually good. So a can is very good. I think like there's like 50%, but you're still not going to get everything that you need from, from a dry food. But you really need to do your work in reading the labels. Like there's a can of, what's, what's the other one? Um, Origin is good. The ones that actually smell really good. And a lot of the pet stores will give you free samples of the pet food for you to try. Like the single proteins are always good. So. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm so because Kingsley um, is allergic to a lot of uh, the, the way food is processed, right? So like what I have to get for him is the food that they only sell at Global Pet Foods. Actually, it's like a special needs dog food because it's like one protein, like one and like everything is very boring, very simple, mm -hmm. and it, the way it's processed, like prepared, is different too. Even though it's kibble, mm -hmm. and I found because Kingsley has that, it's like it's it's the caviar brand. But um, but it's special needs for dogs food, and he's he hasn't had difficulties ever since he started eating that food, right? Because he used yeah. to get like well with the environmental allergies too is a little bit different, but that food really helps keep his digestive system really good and uh, with his skin allergies too. So. Yeah. I, I just literally went to like 20 different foods and a can is really good. Orangian is really good too. Mm -hmm. But like for Kingsley, it wasn't. Yeah, not every food is like good for it. Like you really have to just go and do what's best for your dog. And then you can always add supplements. Like there's this really great, um, no, it's called wet food, but it's not wet food. It's, um, it's made by Veruva. And there's also a great one at Walmart in the cat section. It's compliments. It's a little tin and it's actually human grade. Like it's grated chicken. 
like it's just chicken in like a in a, in a kind of sauce you can get prawns you can get salmon it's like a dollar a little can like it would only one can would only do one meal mm -hmm. so you could put it on top but it's real meat like oh, sure. you not get enough of it because it's literally just the food like you could actually put it on a cracker yourself and eat it like it's, it's really really good so it seems like mostly every kibble has been recalled at least once, which is scary. Like it's super scary the amount of um, the recalls on food. Like that's yes. the one thing that you're constantly seeing shared because the food is not made. Like the food, like like the food that we're discussing today is made by by Mars, isn't it? Like it's not even it's not even a top food company. Like so specialized. Like I like I we were only talking about this in the pre-show. I will not spend the money on myself for my food. But oh my god, will I spend the money on for my dog? Oh, absolutely. Because, because I know, like, she needs the good stuff. And this is the one thing that we say: a dog will eat anything. A dog will literally eat anything. If you look at, say, wolves in the wild, a wolf will die if they don't get their meat. If they don't get their meat, they're not going to start eating crap that they find on the street. Same with coyotes and like that. They will find their kill, and if not, they're going to die. Yeah. Just because dogs will eat the crap that is in this food doesn't mean it's good for them. Like, look at a lab, for instance. A lab will eat carbon. And they think, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Even the, do the dogs that I mind at the moment. One of them thought it'd be great to eat some tissue the other day. Oh! And, like, when it comes to this kind of stuff, like, you're like, okay, yeah, just because they eat it doesn't mean it's good for them. Like, don't be fooled. Just don't be fooled by, because like with this dog food, like you might think to yourself, oh great, I'm doing great by my dog and I, I get really natural dog food. So then what do you do? Like you buy it, your dog eats it because they might eat anything. And then with the hardened stools, like they're putting like artificial fiber in it so your dog's stool is hard. So you're gonna think that the dog food is okay because with your dog's stool, it will tell you a lot about the food. So if they have allergies, anything like that, it will give it away. Leanne, if you can just pop the question back up there on Facebook. Sorry, we're just answering Instagram there. So would the solution to be to stop buying commercial pet food? I cook for my dog and I never had health digestive issues. And he'd be 14 later this year. Oh, Helen, what type of dog do you have? That's awesome. And I'm full on for cooking your, your dog's food. Once you have a good mix in there, if you have your, your meat, your sweet potato, your rice, and then vitamins like even coconut oil is a good one to add in. Yes. But definitely, if you have the time to make your dog's food, I would be so doing that. Like, it's definitely, if you can afford it, and it can even get cheaper if you're doing it yourself that way because you can go out and buy the stuff in bulk. So it can nearly work out the same cost, and then you can just freeze it, do it like, do it like meal prep. Yes. Like, oh, I was going to say, I'm really super not motivated to do a meal prep for myself, but David uh, does it for our dogs. So, um, <laughs> My mom also, like, because my parents live in Niagara Falls, so, like, whenever they come over to us, uh, my mom makes soup. Like, she makes beef stew for, like, Kingsley because you can't have chicken or poultry, right? So, like, it's separated, and she makes, like, chicken and, and uh, rice or, like, and pot sweet potatoes for uh, Bella and uh, Katie and David because when he goes fishing, mm -hmm. he gets the fish. He barbecues them with, like, sweet uh, potatoes or with rice, and then he adds spinach, kale, and all that jazz, too. So yeah, yeah, they have a good diet, let me tell you. Like that's an amazing that's diet that you just said. There's no waste, and that's when you can always tell by your dog's poo. Do not underestimate the importance of your dog's poo. Their body yeah. will get rid of whatever the body doesn't want. So if you're feeding your dog it's not high quality, you're gonna have the biggest, stinkiest poop score. If you feed your yeah. dog a raw diet, you're gonna have solid little pebbles because their body has taken everything. And the same with the homemade food. You're gonna have same result of small poos. It won't be as solid as the raw, but they will be very little poos. <laughs> I'm always on about the poo, and some people do think I'm crazy. It's health, right? Yeah. You can totally see your dog's health by the poop, right? So it's, yeah, it's completely awesome that way, right? Yeah, because you can't, your dog can't tell you. Well, like, like just think to yourselves, guys. If you had diarrhea every day, how would you? That's the thing, right? And and this is this this is a bit like you know for me um, when it comes to Kingsley, right? I know, I know if there's a little bit of change in his food, 
he's going to have a really upset stomach. So like I 100%, I can tell you, he's also going to have a upset stomach if the food is not done a certain way too, right? So like if my mom made it, like it's never, his tummy is always okay after she cooks it for him because it's only organic ingredients. If there's any sort of um, non-organic ingredients, let me tell you, mm, I can test it by my dog. He breaks out like a teenager, honestly. Yeah, I know I just love what they do. It's like if we were on our own health kick and we were blending up our own smoothies. Like, and sweet potato is always the easiest, guys. Even if you're feeding kibble, like Jeffrey we were talking about earlier about the kibble, if you're feeding kibble, a great one is just to get two sweet potatoes, three sweet potatoes, depending on the size of your dog. What type of dog do you have? So, whatever you have, like, you can always just do, like, on a Sunday night, boil up three to four sweet potatoes, mash it. Put it in the fridge and then use that as the mix for the kibble like the dog will love it and the way will love it like there's so many little, little tricks you can do but sweet potato dogs love it so like to them it's really nice and it's an extra treat so it's a great one for for the dogs like for to be able to to put it on top of their kibble so i'm just going to go through kibble raw food and homemade diet just quick overview and in, in the show notes, we'll also, like, I'll give you the link to it uh, for the breakdown. But kibble, the benefit of the kibble, like, the food is diverse in range. So if your dog has allergies, there was there was lots of single proteins out there. So the great one is always kangaroo. If all else fails, That's kangaroo right. kind of hits the hits the button on the allergies. Like, that That one I always find is really good, but it can get very expensive. The best way to defeat kibble is supposedly that it's balanced nutrition, that all the supply of everything that your dog needs is in that bag of kibble. So it formulates by all the necessary proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, fiber, and minerals that the dog needs in order to thrive. That's only if you get the best of the best kibble. Mm-hmm. The other great thing is that kibble can be bought in bulk. Like, have you seen the size of some of the bags? Suzanne, you probably have the huge bags as well. Yeah, so uh, Kingsley's bag comes in an extra small bag or extra large bag. There's no middle in between, right? So, like, we have to get, like, the bigger one, and it's just, yeah. But it lasts them for, like, some time, too, right? So it's good. So that's the good thing about kibble. Like, you can just buy it every two months or so, and then you don't have to you don't have to remember to go and buy it. It's better dental health than if you were feeding your dog wet food. The quality can be poor, and that's what we were talking about earlier. You need to investigate. You need to know what's in your dog's food. Don't just go by, oh, he eats it. You want to make sure that he likes it and that it's doing good for him. And then, as we're saying with the, the fiber that they're putting in, you just need to make the ingredients because the poop isn't going to tell you everything if they're putting in artificial like poop hardness because that is just... Absolutely. Like, I didn't even know. I was actually shocked when I was doing the research for this. Well, Leanne, that's actually amazing. Leanne went through and found out everything that was in it. But to find out that there's an artificial steel hardener, like, I was like, wow. Even Leanne was saying to me, she goes, she was um, preparing the stuff um, yesterday. She was sitting in Starbucks. And she was like, I've never been so mad sitting in Starbucks and, like, disgusted at what was in there. Because she wasn't expecting to find that there was nothing in the food. <laughs> like, all those crap grinded up together. Yeah. So, it's, it's a shock for a lot of people, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, I, I want to say, but then it's not really because marketing is great for these people, right? You don't know what happens behind closed doors and they lawyer up. So like, I'm telling you, like, even if, you know, you want to do any kind of sort of thing, you can't mm-hmm. because, you know, they, they, they honestly know what they're doing. Yeah. And they're making so much money. Mm-hmm. Everything's about money, unfortunately, right? Like any, everything is about money, right? So it's, you know, it, it, th- this is the sad reality, right? So, you know. Yeah, but the best part is everybody's getting educated. Like, people are learning more and more. So, guys, look at the ingredients. Like, the ingredients will tell you all you need to know. And then Google. You have your phone there with you when you're in the shop. Google. Oh, and, and as you said, Susanna, when we are talking at the pre-show, if you can't pronounce it, you don't buy it. See, but I see one problem with all of this is that, you know, they're going to be significantly cheaper than the other brands of food, too. And and unfortunately, some people are not going to be able to afford more expensive food or more healthy food. And this is this is where the food industry fails big time. Right. Like we should be able to make it affordable for everybody, for every dog, too, and every human. Right. But unfortunately, junk food in humans is is for humans is so much cheaper than actually organic food. So where do people go? 
junk food because it's cheaper. Yeah. So that's exactly the same thing. dogs. Yeah. I call no, that McDonald's for dogs. Literally, I call that food McDonald's for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Same with another brand too. Only it doesn't probably taste as good as McDonald's. At least McDonald's actually tastes good. I don't know. I haven't had it in 20 years, so I have no idea. I haven't had it in 20 years. It has been my diet. I'm on the road this week. So, like, I'm literally drive through, like, as I drive, like, back to Toronto. Like, it's just, it's sad. And I probably won't eat McDonald's, like, until I have to do an next road trip, like, because. I'm judging you right now, silently. Oh, sorry. And publicly. <laughs> I have to tell you a story about the time that I did stop off to have proper food and because I was on my own, I, I was convinced I met, I was like, it's, I met a serial killer. So <laughs> McDonald's drive through is going to save my life. You know what? You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> so that's my justification for it. It's safer to go to McDonald's than for serial killers. <laughs> but we don't need to be going into what's happening to me on the road this week. Back to the dog food. So... <laughs> So the raw diet. So there are numerous of advantages to feeding a raw to feeding the dog raw food diet, which primarily consists of raw meaty bones, chicken necks, beef bones. You follow um oh the Doberman. What's his name again? Uh, is it Bane or is it uh, no. Doberman? No, that's a Rottweiler. Sorry, which one? Kobe? No. Oh my God. Are you watching now on Instagram? Oh, I don't think he is. Um. Is it from the from our show that we did the judges no. show? Yeah, Toronto's Top Dog. Okay, so I think it's Doby. No, Kobe. Well, this is shocking because I want to give a shout out to his Instagram. That dog is like the best food ever. Like eats like a king. I'm sorry, he he probably pop in Bentley, Bentley to Doby. That's it. <laughs> Isn't it Bentley? But your face is telling me it's not. No, Bentley? Yeah. Ooh, Bentley the Dobie? <gasps> Maybe. I, oh, I, gosh. I know human names and not much better, I guess, than dog names now. This is terrible. Yeah, I normally you dog get away from I'm like, like, he's like, what, nine or ten years old? And his diet is amazing. Like, he's better than most humans that I know. And that's what we'll have to give him a shout out when we see exactly who it is, but his mom feeds him amazing. Oh, he is gangster good when it comes to his diet. Yeah, yeah. He's what, nine years old, 10 years yeah. old, and the way he looks, you would never know. Oh no, it's amazing. And then the other stuff that like you can see in there is supplementary fruit, vegetables, eggs cooked raw, yogurt, and organ meat. So the yes. primary advantage yeah. is that the dogs prone to allergies tend to thrive on the raw diet because it's not having all those crappy ingredients that we were talking about with the with the kibble that they would use to boost up the kibble. So it's, and you always, back to the poop, you always see the tiniest of poop ever because their dog is absorbing everything from the raw food. So it's literally only the waste. And that's why, like, I love it. And I do see raw. Like, I, like my dog, like, she's a picky eater. If I put kibble down, that would never, it would be left there for me. Like, yeah. I, I used to do homemade meals until we went to raw because it's just easier. It's easier for me just to do um, raw. But the few dis the few like disadvantages is the cost. It's expensive to be raw. You'll need to go and find somebody to supply your raw. On the great place um, on Symington and Davenport it's called the Big Pig. Oh my God, my name's been gone, but we can it's right there. It's the only thing for the stores in that area. Like, I think he works for like fifteen dollars a week to to feed the dogs. I think around that, or maybe longer. But it's absolutely amazing. But the other bad thing then about raw is can it can carry harmful bacteria, which is salmonella. Yeah. But the dog's digestive system actually can handle it most of the time. Like, if your dog doesn't like it, you not kind of make them do it. And then you have to make sure they're refrigerated or it's not left there because we're going to do it all day. Like if your dog doesn't like it and they're picky here, I wouldn't go with this option. I'd probably go with more of a homemade option to go with something like that. So, so for many pet owners, their dogs have an enjoyable experience that allows them to control over the food. 
the quality of the food and then you can do yeah. it on your budget as well so there's so many different ways to do it that you don't need to spend a fortune if you're going to do home cooked foods so if there's anybody who's watching out does anybody do home cook or no matter what you feed your dog i'd actually love to know if you're watching right now pop in the comment section what you feed your dog and why i'd love to know the why behind it i know for a lot of large dogs like they might go with the kibble because it's just more affordable or those who have busy lifestyles but most people who make food like they would have their chicken breast and ground fish and they put their rice and potatoes beans carrots some liver oh my dog you ever make liver cake or anything for your dog i am not a kitchen person so I'm gonna say no because I don't really go into the kitchen very often unless I have to eat um, but uh, David gets really creative um, when it comes to making stuff for, for doggies if we run out of their uh, food then mm -hmm. he makes them like something uh, you know we always have ground beef or we have chicken too or you know what not but it looks get really creative and he would even make them a stew or like little burgers oh I'm sorry my little uh, little doggies at the door give me one second I have one scratching beside me here what's happening oh sorry Princess hello oh Katie it's Katie <laughs> oh. my baby's behind me asleep <laughs> they're, not like here. they're like oh <laughs> Yeah, she's living like a queen, asleep on the bed in the hotel. <laughs> oh, you know what? I my, my dogs are jealous of your dogs right now, currently, honestly. Oh, so so that's what back, back to the food. So with the homemade food, it's great for picky eaters mm -hmm. because more than likely they will eat it. And if allergies are an issue, you can then do an elimination diet. Like you can <coughs> eat one, take out one, and kind of just do it the same way. Like for humans with the with food allergies, you just do it with the elimination. So also for dogs with special needs, such as poor dental or jaw problems, homemade food might be maybe necessary because they don't have the teeth and are able to grind it down. So it can be very time consuming and inconvenient, but cooking large batches is the way to go when you're cooking for dogs. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's just the overview. We're going to pop in the show notes where you can find out more about each diet. But guys, if you're watching, I want to know what you feed your dog and why. And then the best, like if you guys missed it, go back later on, catch the replay about the dog food and how marketing makes you think you're actually feeding your dog something good. Because oh. like, it's, it's shocking guys. If I put on a plate what was in there, you would probably vomit to think that's what you were giving your dog. You should be only giving your dog stuff you're willing to eat. Like there's like, imagine if I put some dead carcasses, just in some oh. artificial, like artificial fiber, artificial protein, and I said to you, here, eat that. Like, no. Katie, would you be having any of that? <laughs> Katie kills her own animals for food. <laughs> I'm just saying. She, uh, you know, uh, no, the funny story is she doesn't eat them. She just, like, joyfully kills them. She likes the cheese. And, the, and, and she's the type of dog, I'm telling you, because she's a street dog. She'll definitely eat anything. And nothing really affects her, I want to say, like with digestive stuff. But you know what? I want my dogs to have a long and healthy life. And I, I just, you know, I'm very picky about what I get them for food, right? And because of that, you know, that they're healthy, right? Like their joints are like Bella's going to be, what, 10 years old? And Bella, Bella, you, you couldn't tell that you know she's going to be that age mm -hmm. because of her healthy lifestyle i always joke about it but also the treat mooching as well <laughs> and everything right just the exercise that we provide so it's, it's a it's a circle of everything right it's not just one thing or another okay, okay, okay here go go sorry i'm just gonna let her out go. Go. she needs to uh she she saw doggies in um on the field out of my window so she's gonna want to go outside now yeah but that's what just what you're saying it all even applies to dog treats and we can yeah. go through that all other time like i spent like i'm in the States, so i spent eight dollars on this little small pack of treats but it's all dry buffalo all this kind of stuff and holly was eating those treats in a high stress situation yesterday which tells you how good they are and she oh, yeah, absolutely. that kind of stuff because like she would not be having any of that 
and we were out for dinner last night and she kept waking up and going like pawing at the food and that's just not her well it's because it's all meat tastes yeah. good like there's, it's not full of crap and always I, watch it for your yeah. dog treat that's not made in china like anything made in china do not feed your dog yeah but that's the thing right like people need to understand that you know um the food that they eat also influences their behavior too right because like if it doesn't drive really well with them they're not going to have a good day right because they want to have poor digestive issues and then their poop as you said like it's all about the poop right too uh they're going to be runny and then you know things that they could usually handle they might not be able to handle to tolerate just because of how they feel internally and they really can't tell us right so this is where i'm always like hey guys be cautious with what you feed your dogs um give them a healthy like lifestyle healthy balance of food and you know what things are good to go genetics are a whole different story of course but you know what everything can be um helped with the proper food mm -hmm. the healthy lifestyle too right so yes. this is the whole thing let's just you know i mean i wish i can practice what i preach too because you know i'm not always a healthy eater i have to always have a bagel here or there or like drink mm -hmm. one of those uh green tea lattes which are not really good for you but um all in moderation right that's it and guys we we'll put everything up on the show notes so if you want to go to the show notes go to the back show dot dog and if you're watching this now on social media, we would love if you could share the word, get it out there. We want to educate people. That's the whole purpose of the show is just to get the word out, no matter what it is, because there's so much bad stuff out there, particularly like when you come to this kind of stuff and what marketing can make you think is in your food. It's the same ourselves when we're like buying chicken in the aisle, you're buying frozen chicken, chicken nuggets, chicken, whatever. Like the chicken isn't in there. So guys, if you could spread the word, that would be amazing. Because all this is going to help the dogs, and you can help your dog mm -hmm. just by making the smallest little change in their diet. Well, it's, it's definitely worth it. It's it's this is a really good topic, and I'm happy that we had some of our viewers to share what they feed their dogs, and and everybody else too. When you watch it, I will save this Instagram video. So um, it's going to be live for the next, what, 24 hours. It's going to be recorded. So please go and take a look or log into the Facebook, uh, Toronto Dog Walking. And um, we're going to have a show there. So if you are not able to watch it right now, uh, Pam has shared some valuable information when it comes to food and food brands. Awesome. So guys, anybody who is joining us, even watching the replay, we'd love to know what you feed your dog, why you feed your dog, and if you see any benefits from it. So, just super interesting to know. So, we will be coming back in the chat. Yeah. So, we're just moving on now to just our weekly dog roundup. So, what has happened this week in the news, all dog related. So, Amazon have actually launched their. <laughs> yeah, so. Hello, <laughs> Hello doggies. <laughs> It's a dog show, true and true, and the dogs that make guest appearances. So I don't know. I don't think they really see him on Instagram, but he's sitting here beside me. He's such a suck. Like he just loves his cuddles. He's really emotional. I think he's a bit like Katie. So back to the news, guys, and getting distracted by the dogs. <laughs> so what's new? Um, Amazon have launched their own range of dog food called Wag. So no surprising news here, considering that the market is huge. And they see sales coming in from all over, like for all the pet products that they sell. And and we aren't even able to buy everything that's in the US. Like the US must be huge. Like I actually bought them um, like a stroller for Holly, like, and I had so many different selections to buy from Amazon.com. But Amazon.ca, like it's very, very limited compared to what they can buy in the States. So it's starting out with dog food and God only knows where we would go from there. So Susanna, would you buy your dog food from Amazon? If their own home creation, I think, is what it's going to be. But I'm assuming somebody's going to make it for them, but they're going with their own brand. See, I'm um, I'm going to say no uh, because um, I feel like FDA in the States approves a lot of things that should not be approved. Um, and things that should be approved are not approved. So I, I would just say no, no disrespect to anybody who orders or to the company or anything. But you know what? I'm. It, it, it's no. I, just, <laughs> I think I, it's going to be a no for me too, unless it's proven to be as good as the other ones. Like I would, it would only come down to me recommending it. I still wouldn't be my dog because it's not. I don't see. 
of character for that, but I don't want to put him through that and shake up his um, system that we got going on now. <laughs> um, because we have been, as I said, through like 20 different brands. And I'm telling you, I was trying pulling my hair out. I'm like, oh my God, this like, from stress because I'm like, I'm never going to find something that my dog is going to be okay with. And I yeah. wasn't buying uh, foods from um, the pet stores because they have a lot of ingredients there that I don't really yeah. care for in my dogs. And anybody watching, would you buy your food from Amazon? And I, I could actually see people buying it because like, what is there not to love about Amazon Prime? You need the dog food tomorrow and it's going to be at your door. Oh, like I'm addicted. I love Amazon Prime. It's terrible. <laughs> and I blame I, you because I started with the microphone again and my addiction started again <laughs> with ordering too, things. Too easy. Like it's like it's gonna come down should we buy Whole Foods and like it's like at least Whole Foods is great. But like just to be able to order your food and to to have it like near the same day, all depending on what time you order that because the distribution is so close. So guys, let us know if you would order it. See, I can see people doing it for convenience because it's always that thing that you see somebody trucking into the store to buy the, the massive bag of food that like it might be easier to get somebody to, to go, oh, hello, little Arlo. Oh my gosh, Suzanne, you want to check little Arlo out? She's at the joint. Hi, Arlo. <laughs> little dog hello. ever, and she's so good. Her parents, Susanna, you would be so proud of how they trained her. Like, she is absolutely an amazing dog. She yeah. is. Hi, thank you for joining us. And, and disappeared too, very quickly. I feel like it's Sunday, right? So it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, when she, like, she, like, she done clicker training and she is just amazing. So next part of the news. Oh, so guys, for those of you who are on Instagram, you're not going to see this. There was a dog who was attacked allegedly by three dogs on Cherry Beach this week. So for those of you watching on Instagram, if you could go to at Justice for Fido, so it's J-U-S-T-I-C-E, the number four, Fido, F-I-D-O. So the one there, help them spread the word. On Facebook, um, you can actually see the image, you can see the Toronto Animal Service contact information for it. You can see the, the dogs that were allegedly the ones who attacked Fido. So help spread the word like this is, like getting attacked by dogs like this is just like, the dog must have been so lucky to survive. Yes. Now, it's really, really terrible. And guys, if you go back into the barkshow.dog, one week we did the Coyote Fest, which is amazing for help protect your dogs against dog attacks and coyotes. So if this dog was wearing the Coyote Vest, it would have had a better outcome. It wouldn't have probably broken the skin because it's made out of Kevlar. Like it's an amazing project. So go to coyotevest.com for anybody who is worried about their dog getting attacked, especially if you have a small dog and you don't like you're that bit more worried about the dog park because some dogs are at the dog park you shouldn't be. And Cherry Beach is off leash as well. So like I can imagine those dogs probably were, shouldn't have been in that situation, but you can't guarantee and hope that other people are actually going to not bring their dog to these places because maybe they just haven't actually got it, like made an attack. Ah, oh, Kate's leading us. He wants to make an appearance. Is everybody making a guest appearance today? Everybody here today, yeah, sorry. Oh, everybody. I love it. So guys, again, if you're watching it there on Facebook, you will see the contact information for Toronto Animal Services, but you will need to go, you'll find it actually on our Facebook page if you want to share it, or else go to Instagram at Justice for Fido. So J-U-S-T-I-C-E, the number four, Fido, F-I-D-O. Go there, follow him. Like it's only a brand new account, but please, please, please just go and help. Cause I can't even imagine what the poor parents are going through. Like the injuries the dog suffered are, woo, like. See, that's the thing that I'm trying to tell people too. It's, it's, it's you, you can control your dog, right? But you can't control the actions of others. And that's like the most scary thing when you do go out with your dog, right? And, you know, because I help out with so many reactor dogs, my biggest, you know, pet peeve is like dogs off leash when they're supposed to be in a leashed area, right? And it's, it, a lot of things could be prevented 
But unfortunately, the, yeah, Cherry Beach is an off-leash park, right? So, like, and if you your dog has those kind of difficulties and behavioral challenges, I mean, what is up with people not using a muzzle? Yeah. People have such a bad perception of muzzle. Whereas I see that as protecting your dog. Like, you're actually saving your dog's life. You're saving them from getting on the dangerous dog list. And if you introduce it in the right way, you're not going to have any issues. Like, yeah. you can clear it up. You can make it sparkly. Like, it just, it's not a bad thing. It's just yeah. Oh, so even um, Leanne was out walking the dog the other day and the dog had a gentle leader on and she got told what the hell is she doing like walking this dog so close to some other man's dog because he, he was so misinformed he actually thought that was the muzzle and yeah. like there's stigma behind a lot of stuff right and people just unfortunately want to judge other people and you know impose like listen like i am a very scientific person and and when i say i will not use aversive stuff such as a shock collar i know why i'm not using it okay and to me you know when people say oh you need to use it for hunting you need to use it for this or that i'm like you know what i call bs on that because for these shock collars were probably like there there were other you know training stuff that you could use to train them to come and go right so i call bs right um but people just want to be know-it-all too and they just want to you know tell you this or that and sometimes you just gotta let them talk and just in and out and bye-bye you know yeah. that's always the best advice for i always say to people at the dog park because you're going to meet people who think they are a trainer because they had a dog and they did a certain method and and it works and yeah just be polite and say okay 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 i'll let it go as quickly as you heard it do not Honest Honestly, that is that is what I do. I'm like, ah, I don't even look at people anymore. I make eye contact with the dog before I make eye contact with humans, just because of that reason, and just go on your merry way, right? Just because again, like I had a um, dog, Kingsley used to be reactive to a lot of things, but not in a bad way. It was a huge shutdown. So I'm like, I understand how it is to have a dog that would could react negatively to things, mm -hmm. and you know, it just makes you much better of a human with other humans because you understand, hey, your dog is aggressive or your dog is reactive or your dog is scared of other dogs. You know what? I'm giving you space. I wish everybody would do that. Yeah, and that's why, like, don't put your dog in this situation. If you have to constantly apologize or people are saying things to you about your dog, get the hint. And Thank don't you. put your dog in the certain situation. Like, Thank you. Thank you. We have a we have a cute little uh, Doberman here in my neighborhood, and oh my god, she is such a lovely dog. But she's a little nosy dog. She like gets into everybody's business. She comes into here and there, and I'm like, her owner always apologizes, and I'm like, so she's always off leashed in in, in a on leash area, right? And and I just kind of wanted to say to her, I'm like, don't say sorry all the time. Like, you're going to meet the wrong dog one day, right? Unfortunately, my dogs are friendly, right? Like, they're going to be fine, you know, with her stopping by and whatever. But there's going to be a dog that's going to try to, like, you know, bite your dog. And then yeah. saying sorry is not going to help you there. Just, like, you know, follow the rules. Yeah. They're putting their like safe that. Yeah. If, if you find yourself saying it over and over again, then you might say just... Well, she always... Yeah. Do? Well, it's not going to, it's only small changes. It's not like you even have to do anything big to, to, to stop apologizing. Yeah. Oh, I'm moving on. I guess who's in the news again this week? United uh, Airlines. <laughs> but like this time, like, remember we had that like long conversation about what they can do to like make things right? Yeah. But they have, they have gone and updated their pet policy, which only actually applies to dogs that fly in the hole, so this does not apply to any of the dogs that fly in the cabin. So they have banned 47 breeds from flying in the hole. So, oh my gosh. So, and that's going to accomplish what? That's going to accomplish so, them doing a better job? So it means they're, so they were before taking dogs that they shouldn't have been that were already on there, no fly in the hold. So you're talking about short signals, so you have your pugs, your shits, all that. So they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Because I remember when um, Holly first flew to Canada, she wasn't on the list, but a pug was. But see, United Airlines were having dogs die on them that they had on the list, and they weren't obeying their own list. But they've upgraded it now to 47 in total. Like, 47, like there's lots of dangerous breeds on there and all, but I'm not sure what. That, like, you have the Akita German Shepherds, like there was... A really, really long list like that. I actually don't know what dog is allowed to go in the hold anymore. So my question for you is, um, 
how are these people, if they're moving countries, how are they going to get their dogs over here? But, the um, like, there's a huge opportunity for one airline to do it and to do it right. Have a designated area, like under, like the area underneath, some of them isn't like even the pressurized like it's supposed to be. Like, yeah. you shouldn't need to be worrying. There should be somebody, one or two people. I'd rather pay more to have two people sitting in the hold because if it's pressurized air cabin, then it's supposed to be the same as where you're fine. Well, then it should be fine for somebody to buy underneath with you. Like, how much more would you pay for somebody to sit down there and comfort your dog through turbulences and make sure they're okay, give them water if they need it, or watch yeah. for something? I, I can't even tell you how much I would pay for people out there with like again, when it comes to my dog, I'll pay for me. I, won't I just don't understand how this cannot be common sense when you, you know, start having dogs on your airline. You know, these things, like why, do, again, like my whole thing is like, why do we always have to be reactive? Why can't we be proactive, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it really, um, it really boggles my mind, you know, Pam, like I just, I get really, really disturbed about these kind of things uh, because, it's again common sense is not so common anymore nobody's about safety what they worded like the actual wording for the dangerous dog strong god dog breed what the heck is that to right like there's nobody sitting down there with the people like what was the dogs breaking out our kennels or something like i'm like yeah there is bad but like fix it like there is a huge opportunity for somebody because you also don't want people going out and trying to miss their dog as a service dog or an emotional support dog and then putting their dog in a horrible situation like guys you have to remember, if you're sitting on an airline you have what like a foot and a half square that you and your dog have to sit in yeah not all dogs can do that your dog can't step up your dog can't relax in this situation where it's surrounded by people do not put them in the situation of bringing them on the airline support dog are not but don't be going and trying to find work around because I can't even imagine the experience your poor dog could have. And then you have the the dog who was on Delta, I think it was. They had oh. you the golden retriever sitting on his lap and they bit the face of the person sitting beside him. That's that's wrong too. Like there should be some kind of course that they need to go through that it like conditions them to the situation. Because whenever is your dog put in a situation where they have to sit on the floor in a one and a half square foot, like it doesn't happen. So guys road trips are just the best like i'm traveling with the dogs now we travel from san diego to we're in chicago right now and we're going to toronto and on the road is great like they're having a great time we stop off we go to dog parks we do like six seven hours maybe at push a day and the dogs are so happy like i'm so jealous don't need and i told you you should have called me <laughs> you should have called me i'm like you know my number i'm in i'll just bring katie with me she'll protect us from like the rodents or whatever <laughs> if we need any protection Oh, oh, you should. Like uh, I don't know whether you follow them. Travel with my dog underscore is our thing. So you'll get to see we were in Vegas or San Diego. We went oh, through. I, uh, I like, saw their Instagram. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to have to restart the Instagram because 22 more seconds are remaining, right? I think we're going over an hour, Pam. And we're not even done with our segment yet. We're going to two hour show one by another. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and restart your Instagram. And I'm gonna go. yeah, let me end it and I'm gonna I'm gonna come back. Okay, just give me one second. So guys, sorry if you're watching here on Facebook. We're also live on Instagram at the same time, and Instagram only gives you an a lot of time of sixty minutes. And this show is actually only supposed to be sixty minutes. Okay, so oh. I don't have an option for saving it. I have an option for sharing it. Is that what you want me to do? You'll have to share it. I yeah, look. Is there a download image in the top? No? Nope. See, I'm oh. telling you, like my phone is a prehistoric phone now. I'm getting a new one, okay? Yeah, so if you just click share, and sorry guys if you're watching on Facebook, we're just going live again on Instagram. It's yes, just I heard after and there, so we're just going live back there, so just bear with us. So if you're only joining us now, I would suggest you go back and watch the replay. We went through how marketing dog food can, like, how much the marketing actually sells the dog food because it's really like it's, it's actually as bad as it can get like we were having a discussion about if you were actually to put on the on a plate the 
the real food ingredients, you would be looking at chicken carcass, you would be looking at some feathers, some, like when I say the, the supplements they were putting in there, like say pea starch. So they were, was the second ingredient of pea starch? All because they wanted, there, there wasn't enough protein already in the dog food. So they thought pea starch would be the best thing to do. And you're like, just, just fill the dog with dog food, but actually real food. So we were going through what to look out for in in dog food, what makes a good dog food. But suggest you go back out right at the start of the show that we go through all that stuff. So definitely. Yeah. So again, this Instagram, I'm telling you, like, again, I didn't save it because it didn't give me an option to save. I don't know what to tell you. I'm okay. buying a new phone. I'm going today. I'm going to buy a new phone. <laughs> right. So we, we've gone through all that. So guys, huge amount and we were already over time. We're always over time. So it's next been an hour, girl, and we still were halfway to our show because you had such great information about food. Like food industry is so important. Um and and I think we need to when we when we talk about when we do these bark shows, right? Like we need to touch upon different things, right? So I thought that was really important. And then we have to share what happened in the news, that dog attack as well, justice for Fido. And then, you know, we need to kind of do all these things. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, and actually, just that one thing. So the ad was targeted to me on Instagram, and oh. you want to see the comments. Everybody knew that dog food was like, like poop. Everybody knew the dog food was poop, and they didn't use that kind of language. But yes, I was so happy to see that everybody was educated. So, so much like we could literally talk about that for a week we could do a show every week for absolutely that kind of we totally could i feel like i told you we need to have a slumber party and we need to um do this like a 24 or like a 12 hour kind of show right like you know, a little bit of training walking food you know sleeping mm -hmm. you know just yeah space doggy space like whatever right we can yeah. use what my dogs are doing right now it's ridiculous so if you guys are joining us on Instagram, if you go back to see Susanna's previous live, we went through a great feature on dog food and what to watch out for. Do not be fooled by the marketing department. They get paid mega bucks for a reason, and that is to sell poop for money. And that's exactly what it is. So guys, if you've missed out, you can check it out on the um, I Speak Dog Instagram page. So Susanna, it's time for your study of the week. Susanna loves her study. She is evidence-based girl at heart. So Susanna, what are we going to go through this week? So this kind of goes, this kind of goes together. Kind of together. Yeah. That uh, you kind of talked about a little bit, right? So it's um, it's it's uh, we're adding cats as well a little bit. I know it's a dog show, but we're going to add like a little bit of a you know history with not history, but like we'll talk about cats a little bit too. So how cats and dogs are consuming and processing paraben sensitivity. So the sources from American Chemical Society, ACS, New Service, Weekly Press, and it was done in March 7 of 2018, right? Um, so again, going back to, I have a dog that's allergic to, I mean, everything. And I, when I mean everything, it's like 90% of everything right so for me super I'm, I'm super aware of like what i use for my cosmetics what i use for cleaning supplies what i give them as food what kind of food i intake as well right because it's it's super important for that uh their lifestyle and for just for them to be healthy and and have a long life right mm -hmm. so uh many households can claim at least one four-legged um friend as part of a family right so but pets that primarily stay indoors can have increased rates of diseases such as diabetes kidney diseases and hypothyroidism i'm gonna probably mispronounce some stuff too but so i apologize about that esl hashtag esl um <laughs> So some, uh, and, and you know, when you, when you compare those dogs with dogs that live outside, right? So some scientists propose that chemical substances in the home can contribute to these illnesses. So this is what I'm gonna talk about uh, today with this uh, article, right? So parabens are preservatives that are commonly found in cosmetic and pharmaceutical products, and they're used in human food products and dog cat food is regulated by the US Foods and uh, Drug Administration. So again, Unfortunately, you know, because um, things get approved, things and things don't get approved. It's a money-making industry, right? So, like, there's going to be things in that food, things in cosmetics, things in chemicals, like for, for you know cleaning and whatever, right? That we don't know, and I don't know if everything is always claimed that it's said there, right? So, 
this is why I choose to go to the natural route and, and I'm going to show you down below too, like what I mean by that when it comes to cleaning supplies too, for sure. Um, so research has shown that endocrine disrupting compounds, um, so I'm going to refer them to as EDCs, are potentially interfering with hormones and have harmful effects on developmental, reproductive and neurological systems in dogs and in cats, right? So previous studies have examined the presence of other EDCs such as heavy metals and bisphenol A in pet food, but very little is known about parabens in this context. So again, more new research needs to be done in this aspect for sure, right? And I think I urge whoever's watching, maybe future scientists or whatever, right? I urge you guys to think about these topics too, to do more research or to like, you know, hopefully one day we can start our own research too, right? Um, so... Um, this is why this article, uh, this journal article had 58 variations of dog and cat food, as well as 60 urine samples from animals, right? So it's not like a large, large study in a grain scope of things because there's millions of dogs and, and humans in this world, on, on this um, earth too. However, it's significant enough to show you what that food contains and, and what the chemicals in clinic supplies or anything else contains, right? So I'm gonna mispronounce this because chemistry was never my my strong skill. So the paraben called methyl paraben and the met metabolite called 4-hydrobenzonic acid, 4-HB. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> were the most uh, found chemicals detected in pet food and urine. So, Pam, this goes back to our discussion about food in the beginning. This is disgusting. Um, so the research found that dry food contain higher level of parabens and their meta uh, metabolites than wet food. So again, going back to you also saying wet food, you know, where to find it, how to get it, and, and how to disperse it with our food too is, is um, healthier, right? So in addition, the researchers report cat food had higher paraben concentration than dog food. So again, this is why I wanted to talk about this today too, right? So I know maybe we don't have a lot of cat watchers, but like dog watchers for sure, right? So after the urine analysis, the group calculated the cumulative expense intake for the dogs and cats. By comparing the calculations, the team concluded that dogs are exposed to other sources of parabens besides food, whereas cats' exposure is mainly from their diet. So this could go back to, you know, cleaning supplies that we have, makeup that we use on our faces. How, how many people have their dogs, uh, you know, give them kisses on the face, right? Oh, yeah. Right? So the makeup that you yeah. can affect that too, right? Um, and this is why I wanted to kind of add my own spin to this article. So the toxic um, cleaning supplies, for example, for dogs are ammonia, bleach, alcohol, uh, forma, formaldehyde. I can't even pronounce the rug cleaners there. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm sorry. Uh, phenol and um, things that are found in air fresheners, right? Um, so products that would be really good for your dogs, like, you know, when you're cleaning that are not, that would not affect them. And believe you me, I know this because I have a dog that's affected by everything. Um, <laughs> baking soda is really good. All purpose floor cleaner can be vinegar and water. Just mix it together and just give your house a cleanup, right? And it's not damaging to floors. It's not damaging to your environment, nothing, right? All purpose, um, so glass surfaces, you can do, you can mix lemon juice and you can mix water too. And it gives you that lemony fresh scent, not that crap that you find in those um, bleach things for floors, yeah. right? Uh, urine, vomit, and poop stains can be cleaned with liquid soap and baking soda easy peasy right and the toilet bowl cleaner because hello i have um that's a water buffet for miss caitlin here <laughs> uh, even though i put it down the toilet seat she knows how to lift it up uh, so uh vinegar and water too right so it's not toxic for dogs and and, and it's you know definitely gonna help you with um keeping your house chemical free and and for for, for example even for your um you know, perfumes that you use, makeup that you use, everything that I have is toxic free and it's not been tested on animals, right? So I pride myself on that just because, you know, I have a dog first and foremost that's allergic to everything, but that's not the reason why I, don't, I, I, I use 
chemical free things i've been using them for like the last 10 years right just because i find that you know for me and this is a personal kind of thing if it has to be tested on animals i'm not using it oh yeah have you ever seen the horrible pictures and videos that like yeah of support like is it the the beagle that's one of the main dogs that they test Beagles on? are the main dogs they use for testing because of their nature right they're the dogs that are apparently it's proven that they are they just let you do whatever right which is so unfortunate um i just want to tell you i have like 28 percent left on my battery so let's let's get this going <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to another topic um how to choose a good dog walker. Pam said, uh, Pam will t talk to us about um, a story that you shared with me, so I don't want to say it, but I want you to share it with me. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. So first off, we'll just start off with not anybody can be a dog walker. And we are just seeing more of an influx of the kind of apps for dogs, dog walking. So. A friend of a friend, so I only got, oh, there's little Holly. She's waking up for a nap. <laughs> so a friend of a friend. So they had ordered a dog walker off one of the apps. So the, the day came for the dog walk. The dog walker came and the dog walker left. She got her note afterwards and let her know how everything went. So she's like, oh, OK, afterwards. So then the dog walker just messaged her through the app and said, I happen to lose my wallet today. Did, it, did I leave it in your home? And she had a look around her home. Like, couldn't couldn't find it. So like, no. So then, like, she was like, if I see it, I'll let you know that kind of stuff. So later on that night, she climbs into bed. Her and her dog go. She's going to sleep. She turns over. Feels something in her bed. It was his wallet. So how did her wallet end up, how did his wallet end up in her bed? Imagine the scariness of coming home to find somebody's wallet in your freaking bed. Like, so like she went crazy, like she was contacting the app and all these apps are mission impossible to contact because nobody has a contact number. Like you have to, it's always chat. And the dog walker said the dog was on the bed when he arrived. And the wallet must have fallen out when he got the dog off the bed. Like, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding this. Um, your wallet is usually in a pocket. Pockets are tight. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I'm not buying the story. Like, but what would you do if your dog walker left the wallet? in your bed no okay the wallet's in the bed how did it get in the bed what was he doing in your bed like there is some pretty weird people out there like i just want to say cameras in a home sorry no yeah, no yeah. like I, nothing to do with anybody coming into my home yeah. i have three dogs i have cameras in my home i had them when i lived in my penthouse um no i i'm just like i i can't yeah, no way. No way. Like, there's so many apps now that you can just hook up your old phones to become a monitoring system. But I would love if she had a camera in her bedroom. But honestly, would you be thinking you needed a camera in your bedroom? No. I just don't understand. Like, did you leave your dog in your bedroom? No. If the door's closed, your dog can't get in. I, I, in, I can't your in your sheets. In your sheets. The wallet was in her sheets. I can't. I, I'm not even there yet with that part. Okay, I'm just. I'm not even there yet with that part. I'm just like, I can't. I can't. So I, I want you to preach and let people know what actually makes a good dog walker. How you actually need to find a dog walker who's not going to get in your sheets unless their dog's sitting and they're staying at your house, mate, in their dog. I like the the reason why I wrote the. Um, that dog, uh, how to find a dog walker is because of an incident that happened where dogs went missing in a van. And then there's another dog walker where unfortunately he just lets dogs off leash all the time in a really high and dangerous areas. So yeah, this is, this is what made me inspired to do this. So like, I want to start with like, you know, cause everybody calls himself a dog professional. So I want to start with, uh, do you know, the person who actually takes care of the dog, your dog, 
do you um like you know because social media is so big today like even if you go on people's instagrams people post videos of this or that like you can actually see if your dog walker is engaging in inappropriate behavior such as letting your dogs go in areas where they're not supposed to be in right so it's, it's extremely extremely unsafe you know and there's no coming back from that right mm -hmm. um so questions that you can ask your future dog professional is um my very first question that i ask is do you follow the rules meaning like will the dogs be on leash in off leash areas that's one of one how do you deal with reactive dogs you know because there's some dogs that are reactive and you know how do you deal with them right uh do you give them water you know when they're walking do you give them treats do you force them to walk or do you, you know, entice them to walk, right? Uh, what sort of strategies do you practice and implement when it comes to safety purposes, right? Um, how safe are pet toys you use with your dog? That's a huge one too, because again, choking hazards, right? How do you ensure that my pets are safe in your car? Like that's a huge one too, because I witnessed with my own eyes, a dog walker opening the dog on Sudbury Street. This is when I lived on Queen Street West. And the dog, I literally slammed on my brakes because I almost hit this dog. Wow. Like, seriously, by my building where I used to live, Queen and mm -hmm. Sudbury. And I literally had to like slam on my brakes and David was in the car. He's like, oh, he was like, Jesus Christ, like what's this happening, right? Because I, I woke him up because I was breaking like crazy, right? Yes. Um. So that's my whole thing, right? Are you trained for pet first, first aid and CPR? Mm -hmm. Another question too, because I've seen so many of these dog professionals break up these dog fights. How do you safely break up a dog fight? Mm -hmm. you know what you're doing. Are you proactive? Are you reactive, right? Um, how will other recognize who you are? That's another question too. Do you have any logos on your own? Like, do you, do you have anything uh, that I would know that you are a dog walker, you know? Do you have any sort of kind of cards on you if I needed your business information or whatever, right? Um, are you familiar with dog body language? Yes. That's yes. a huge one, right? And will you leaving my dog in the car unsupervised when you go pick up other dogs? Mm-hmm. You know? Or at your home, right? Because, like, you never know. I don't know. I don't know the people as other dogs, right? Like, I don't know if my dog's going to get along with them or not. Like, especially if, you know, especially if they leave something on a, on the floor, right? Like, our dog's going to get territorial, territorial or not, right? So those are really important questions. And another one is, can you have a GPS so I know where you're going with my dog? Mm -hmm. That's a huge one, too. Like, will you be sending me updates? Will you be checking in and checking out when you go, right? Because I've seen some dog walkers go for half an hour or 15 minutes. And you know what? Unfortunately, that's not cool, right? So, mm -hmm. I love the doggies and the sounds that your doggies are making. So, <laughs> how to search for a dog walker. I'd say social media is a huge thing. Ask for their references. I, would, I ask my vet, too, for, like, dog professionals. She's really well... Uh, versed in a dog field so like she you know she would definitely know um, I would ask friends for referrals right and first and foremost I don't know why I never start with this I would see the attraction of that dog walker with my dog and I would see if my dog doesn't want to go near them how they would you know entice my dog to come would they leave them alone would mm -hmm. they just let them come on their own too right um, once You've narrowed down a search to a dog walker for sure like you know so having them come over and whatnot just to kind of see and then um just asking them i think this is the most important question for me too like how do you break up dog fights fights safely because no matter how trained your dog is for me that is a really important question right so how do you handle that how do you handle a reactive dog right um and again, references, references, and more references. People that are good have nothing to hide. Yeah. It's like anything, though, when you're looking, like, especially for a trainer, all this kind of stuff. Your dog can't speak for themselves, so you have to do it for them. Yeah. Uh, seeing how they treat, and as you said, with the reactive dogs, I would always point out, especially if they're on groups, sometimes you shouldn't be putting your dog who's reactive in groups. Oh. And the people who take a reactive dog just to add up the numbers in the group. Like I see it all the time when dog walkers are out, they have some dogs that are happy-go-lucky and then they have a dog 
that's highly stressed, very reactive. And it's like if you're afraid of spiders, we don't throw you in a room of spiders and say, oh, you're going to be cured. And that's exactly what some of them are doing. So great questions. Another one I would say, what do you do in an emergency? Oh, so my we, gosh. Yeah. yeah. We want to know Which, what their process is. Yeah. Which goes back to your previous show, because like you did a really gay a great job outlining, like, what do you do when your dog goes missing? Yeah. Like, what do you do with there, emergency? Yeah. I always love like the people who call me or call, call Leanne and they have the list of questions ready to ask. Like, I'm like, like people go, oh, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, this is the best thing ever. And then as well, do you use positive reinforcement? Do you use yeah. punishment? What do you do if a dog misbehaves? Then you yeah. want to know communication because it's always like, will it be the same person walk my dog? What if it's not like there's so much to ask? And don't be afraid to ask the questions because again, as Susan said, if somebody has anything to hide, this is when you're going to find out. You'll get to know them from this. They will welcome those questions if there is. Absolutely. And even if they said they use positive reinforcement and yet you catch them that they don't, you know, that's the thing, right? Like this is where I would let my dog just interact with them because Kingsley will let me tell you. He'll tell mm -hmm. you if he likes them or not. He yeah. will let them know. Holly, Holly, like, Holly basically talks English. Like if she doesn't like somebody, oh my God, is she going to let them know about it? Oh, and this is a huge one. If you ask them, who is the dog trainer that they admire? And if they say Caesar Milan, you run for the fecking hills. You run bye bye forever. You as fast as you can because you're going to hear then that they're going to alpha roll your dogs. They're going to kick your dog to get to the, them to stop focusing on the dog that they were focusing on or like all these like not so great techniques. So I and I always do that when I'm even looking for a walker, like come on board because it's so hard to find them um, awesome dog walkers like. So I always ask them the same question, who do you admire in the dog training field? And again, as you said, anybody who calls themselves the dog whisperer. Yeah. I, like, yeah. like, anybody who thinks they are a whisperer and reference Caesar Milan, and people will probably reference Caesar as well, not oh. known, but he was the first person out there on television with their own TV series before we had Netflix, before we had everything else. Like, he was the one that was there. So people just assumed that these dogs were getting fixed editing guys editing look at the reality shows how they edit them to make make drama they can yeah. edit them close to look like whatever way they want we don't see what's going on behind we don't see if they're using torture yeah. devices yeah. yeah oh yeah. and the dog walker who will use a prong color or a shock color no you don't know what unfortunately some owners are okay with that and you know we can't change that um and if their you know, owner is okay that's okay yeah the other way around, if they think they're going to throw a prong on your dog, that's not okay. Well, that's the thing. That's why I ask about safety. I'm like, what are you doing with my dog when I'm not watching? Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Like, you know, so, you know, and this is why I like to see that GPS. Not because I'm following what you're doing. It's just I want to make sure that my dog is safe. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is why I don't trust a lot of people with dogs, right? Yeah. So when people ask me to refer people, I'm like, I have a couple of people under five <laughs> where mm -hmm. I can go and, and, you know, recommend just because, you know, I, I've seen there's lovely, lovely, lovely people out there. Um, unfortunately, um, they don't practice what they preach. Uh, they talk about positive reinforcement, but yet they don't know how to use it. They talk that they know how to work with reactive dogs and they don't know how to actually. So things are made worse. And, it, you know, it's it's just this, this, this is the problem that I have with our field. Yeah. It's just totally unregulated and there needs to be some regulation. Like it's all about the dogs. Like guys, your dog can speak to your speak for themselves. Like what they do speak if you listen. Like I've had it before my dog had that experience at a groomer's. First time was fine, second time was okay, third time she was like, Don't let me go in and I stayed and I spied and I was like, Okay, she's telling me don't bring me here again, so I didn't. Like, Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Your dog tells you so much and you can learn so much. And I would even I'd even go to, to a place to say, follow your dog walker if like for like if you ever had any doubts because like somebody is doing anything right, nobody's like and everybody the other thing I will say your neighbors will always tell you anything. Just go Absolutely. Anything. People, the dog walker will not know the neighbor, but the neighbor will know your dog. So have faith in your neighbors. But some neighbors can be a bit weird, but they will, most, most, most will do things in good faith. <laughs>
Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> no, but that's that's an awesome, awesome advice. So where, where can people find out more about that blog, Susanna? Oh, um, so I, I used to really write these blogs. Um, I kind of stopped, but there's still so much valuable information there, so I, I should really start it again. It's um, S-U-Z-C-U-R dot WordPress dot com. And then mm -hmm. you can find a bunch of blogs that I did, like a bunch of like uh, things that I did, that yeah, I started. So, yeah. link to that in the show notes as well, because like it's such valuable information. And then there is lots of information as well, though, on your Instagram that we are on anyway. So most people here will already be, will be aware of you and all your preaching and you always do things for the dogs. So I preach all the time and I practice actually what I preach when it comes to that. Yeah. And your science space, which. Oh, always. People can yeah. agree with me or disagree, but you know what? You can't disagree with science. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So uh, that covers off how to how to choose a good dog walker. And last week we actually went over how to choose a good dog trainer, um, and that was lengthy. Like there was so much information because you can't actually not do your homework when selecting a dog trainer. It's like go back, go to the Barkshow dot dogs and have a look for this article. It was the bomb. There was a lot of information, but you need to do your homework. If you don't do your homework, you blame yourself when stuff goes wrong. We or were, else it yeah. work out only by, by luck that it works out. We were passionate about how to properly choose a dog trainer. We were passionate about what to do um, and scientific to behind, like, you know, what to do if um, the dog gets lost. Um, every every episode that we have thus far has uh, valuable information and every show builds on the topics from the previous show too and we add more and more to it. So I'm actually really, really, really proud of our topics and our scientific research. The last week, the big message for me was, you're not a dog. Don't act like a dog. Oh my God, when I hear people barking at their dogs, I'm like, what the hell is this? Are you a dog? You're not a dog. What are you? You're a human. Stop confusing the poor dog. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, guys, if you didn't see that again last week, it was episode five of the Bark Show. Definitely go back. We'll always be promoting the segments as well. Like we cut up the snippet so you can yeah. go back and watch it because we never stick to the time. We keep saying we're going to be here for an hour and I don't even, we're probably closing in on two hours today. So. I blame you and I blame me. Oh, yeah, we're a combination. <laughs> we just like to talk too much, but we're just at the end of the show now. Our last segment. So anybody who's watching now on Instagram or on Facebook, go ahead and pop your training question in the comments and Susanna is going to answer it for you live. So go ahead right now, put the question in. It could be training related. It could be anything else. We will try and give you the best advice. But Susanna is the founder of I Speak Dog, and she is a scientific evidence-based, positive-based trainer. So go ahead and pop your questions there now. And if you happen to watch on the replay, go ahead and pop them in. We will answer them, and then we'll put them on the show next week so Susanna can also then talk through them. So there was Absolutely. a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, if, so if we don't have any questions for today, um, send me a private message or send it to uh, log into Facebook, Toronto Dog Walking. There's going to be videos. You can pop those questions in those videos and then I can address them at the beginning of our next show or at the end of the next show. Maybe we should do it at the beginning because I feel like we never get to that. <laughs> I'm actually going to ask you a question that we never got to last week, which was from John. And he wanted to know if... Bark collars are such a bad thing. Why are the likes of PetSmart actually selling them? <laughs> He's given some musical instruments here with this collar. So my answer to that question is, as I was telling you about the food, everything's about money. Everything is about promotion. Everything is about advertisement. They prey on people that want a quick fix, unfortunately, and they will pay anything just for that quick fix. Okay. I worked with extremely reactive dogs. I worked with extremely aggressive dogs. I've worked with dogs that have extreme self-injurious behavior and I never had to shock a dog for that. I taught them to self-regulate and I taught them, I exposed them at their level. So you know what? Uh, everything can be done gradually. Mm -hmm. But I'd always, you know, actually I got a survey from PetSmart because I buy Holly's raw filter and I got a survey and I actually sent it to them there. I was like, why do you sell these I think you need to move yourself away from the microphone. 
I think we're gonna end it. I think we should end it today. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yeah, I'm going to just go and end it. Just... <laughs> Bye. Okay, I'm ending it. <laughs> and live video.